Hi guys, Richard from Adventure Off-Road here with another episode of What The Tech for iTech World. Today, we are going through the range of solar panels we've got here, uh, the features, the functions, the usability, the pros, the cons. So when it comes to choosing a solar panel that suits your needs, you, you'll have all the information. So starting off with their ultra thin mountable solar panel, you can see there it's, it's nice and uh, thin. This is something that you would mount to the top of a, a roof rack. Um, or even you could mount it on top of a, a caravan or something like this. Okay, so that's a fixed panel. And the same with this one here. This is really thin, but this is a flexible panel, so you can put it over a, a semi-curved edge. And this is also trafficable, so you can walk on top of it, although you wouldn't want me jumping up and down, but it is uh, able to be walked on. So if you've got a roof that, uh, that you've got to get up and work on, this is ideal for that. Moving on to our range of our solar blankets here. All right, so this is a 300 watt solar blanket laid out there. Behind me, we have a 200 watt, and behind this, we have the 100 watt. They also have the 400 watt and the 400 watt Pro. So what are the pros and the cons? Well, obviously the pros are the fact that the portability and usability of this blanket. The fact that you can angle it up with the legs that kick out at the back there to, to get the best sunlight. Um, the cons, obviously, uh, you've got to, got to find somewhere to store this. And over a period of time, depending on how well you store it, will depend on how it de degenerates. Um, you might get some scuffing and, and some damage on the, on the material as well. So remember, uh, look after them. One other thing to bear in mind, if you do leave this out at night, you may not find it there in the morning. We do have some unscrupulous people in this world that will steal stuff like this. So again, it is portable, very portable. Obviously the pros and cons on this one, um, it's obviously got the Raptor optimized finish on it. It is flexible, which is also a pro and a con, which means that we do need to bond it to a surface really. Um, it's got limited uh, tie downs, um, so we need to, a solid surface underneath it. Um, but the benefit of being flexible is we can bond it to a curved surface. Pros and cons on this one. Pros, obviously, because it is rigid, you could bolt, bolt it to roof rails. Um, as long as you've got plenty of support there, it's not going to be flapping around such as the flexible one. Um, but the limitations obviously are you've got to be able to angle it as well to the, the sun ideally to get the optimum out of it. Um, if this is on top of your roof, it's going to collect the dust, as we've mentioned before. Um, you're going to make, need to make sure it stays clean to get the best out of it. Um, but again, being rigid, it hasn't got any flex in it, so you obviously can't put anything on top. Okay, guys, so we've done some testing in both full sunlight, optimizing the panel uh, to the sun with these two flat panels, and then putting the uh, portable panel at a slight angle so it's less than optimal, all right, and also covering approximately a quarter of the panel with shade. And here are the figures that we, we got up to. So with the panels behind me, the uh, portable ones, uh, in full sunlight, we got 150 watts out of them, okay, and that's optimized to the sun. Putting it at a slight angle where it wasn't optimal, uh, we got down to 128 uh, watts. And then covering a quarter of the panel, uh, we got down to 70 watts. Yep. Now here's the big change. When we did the flexible panel, we had 160 watts lead flat on the ground here. So it's not optimal. We then optimized it to the, uh, the sun that went up to 190 watts. But then when we covered a quarter of the panel, it went down to 21 watts. So a quarter of the panel on this one, only 21 watts. Moving across to the hard panel, we had 120 watts just led there, went up to 148 watts when we optimized it to the sun, but only dropped to 55 watts when we covered quarter of the panel. Why is such a difference in each one of these? Well, first of all, let's talk about the makeup of the panels themselves. We've got a, a rigid panel here, which is a, a glass-like finish and has an air gap underneath and can dissipate heat a lot better than maybe one of these panels that will get hotter in the sun. So there also may, may be a, a part difference there. But then look at the difference in construction itself. So the way that the flexible panel has to be constructed may hinder its uh, low or its shade tolerance compared 
to the rigid panel. Because it's rigid and doesn't flex, it can be wired in a different way or manufactured in a different way to optimize that. Whereas the flexible panel um, with the Raptor coating uh, may be a little bit different. But then you may say, but you know, the panels behind you, they've also sort of semi-flexible, they've got the Raptor coating on them. But what we've got to look at there is the fact that that is effectively four panels, not one panel. So when you affect one panel, you affect the whole panel. Whereas when you've got effectively four panels linked together, you're only affecting one of those panels. The others are still optimal. So again, this should be something you should consider when you are looking to purchase one of these is what are my uses and, and what sort of environment am I going to put these uh, panels into? And therefore, you, you're not going to be disappointed because it's not working how you want because you've got the information they go, well, I'm going to be doing this and therefore maybe this setup is going to be better for me. Whereas you might have a, uh, as I mentioned before, a clamshell rooftop tent where either of those might be a lot better but understanding that if we then park in the shade because we want our vehicle in the shade it's going to have a more dramatic effect so again something to think about when you are purchasing these products so we've got the range of portal panels the 100 200 and 300 watt beauty with these is we can chase the sun with them and we can optimize that by uh, swapping panels if we want 300 watts but that's too big we can use 100 and 200 or even three of the 100 watt panels they do come with the solar regulator uh, extension cable and crocodile clips if you haven't got anything built into your vehicle so good for starting out or even if you just want to add to your existing uh, gear the rigid panel here comes with the uh, bracketry so you can anchor it down to your roof or whatever you're fixing it to. Um, doesn't come with uh, stuff like this, so that is an additional purpose, uh, purchase, sorry. But um, again, uh, if you want something fixed and solid and you've only got roof bars, something perfect for, the, uh, for that. The flexible panel, uh, again, 200 watts would be ideal if you were laminating that with uh, high, high adhesive tape to something like a clamshell rooftop tent where it's on the vehicle all the time. So I hope that's helped you make an informed decision. So we'll see you next time on What The Tech.